Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert, Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. Listen, this is a very important and timely and powerful episode because it was a huge catalyst in my own transformation. And I'm looking forward to really helping to share this message with you and to see the power of this tool for transforming your own health and your own well-being. And this is the power of cooking. All right, now, I was allergic to cooking. All right, I grew up... This was the furthest thing from my mind. I could probably whip some eggs. Uh, matter of fact, the first thing I ever made, true story, Mother's Day, made my mom some eggs in a microwave, all right? Now, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna throw this out there, it probably was not delicious, but I didn't learn much more after that. I became like chef uh, top ramen noodles. Like that was like the extent of where I went with it. And how can a man sustain himself like that? You know, I went to college and without many skills in the kitchen. And of course, as you know my story, I had a big deterioration of my health in that process. And uh, being uh, given this kind of life sentence of having this degenerative so-called incurable illness take place when my body was breaking down because I was not providing it the raw materials that it needed. And so when I made the decision to get well, one of my first steps was to get my behind in the kitchen and start to figure some things out because as you know, healthy food was not that accessible, especially back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And now it's a lot different. We have a lot more options, but this is a huge skill that we need to learn because again, at the time I was in college, when I began to transform my health, I was probably on that hot pocket pretty heavy. All right. But when I tried to get healthy, what I did was I went to the lean pocket. All right. You remember the lean pocket? Why? Why even do it? Why even try? And I realized I, I need to start making some of my own food. And I became very, very versed in the kitchen. And funny thing was my stepfather was a chef and I grew up with that kind of access, but at home, because he did it for a living at home, he wouldn't cook that much. You know, we got a lot of food that was takeout, but I started to rekindle some of those skills, some of the things that I saw him do. And he had a great skill of making something out of nothing. You know, we ended up with pizzas with like Texas toast and like some deer sausage from my grandfather, you know, and just being creative and also having a purpose. And so the ingredients that I began to choose were much higher quality ingredients. And the experience of going to the store, going to the farmer's market, talking with the people that were providing me with my food was also a big healing part of my story. And so today we've got an incredible guest to really speak into this truth about cooking and also to break down some of these barriers that we might have in our minds about creating and making great food for ourselves and for the people that we love. All right, so we're gonna get to that in just a moment, but right now I've got, I've got that hit or quitter in my veins right now, all right? Today I'm fueled on the Four Sigmatic Lion's Mane Coffee. All right, it's one of my favorite things in the world, University of Malaya, check this out. This is just so fascinating. Not only are you getting organic, high quality coffee and not coffee plus pesticides, herbicides, or denticides, genocide, suicide, it's not all of that what you're gonna find in the typical cup of coffee that you get out there at the, at the QT or wherever it is. University of Malaya confirmed that there is some extremely valuable neuroregenerative potential that you find in lion's mane mushroom. It has this class of nerve growth factors, very powerful molecules that stimulate the differentiation and remyelination of your neurons. All right, so one of the things that we see as we get older, for example, is that myelination, you know, the myelin that's protecting those, those nerve transmissions starts to deteriorate. And thus we start to lose those kind of habitual firing patterns. And that's also tied to our memory, to our ability to make certain movements. And this is something that can literally be protected by incorporating some lion's mane mushroom. And it's together in this incredible formula with Four Sigmatic. So it's coffee with lion's mane plus chagas in there as well. Chaga has been found to help to support your natural killer cells function. So it can actually increase your NK cell uh, activity mobilization by upwards of like three, 300%. It's really, really incredible. And it tastes amazing as well. I like to have it with some high quality fat. So this might be for you, maybe some grass fed butter or some ghee or some MCT oil, but definitely do yourself a favor, add this in, protect your brain, give yourself that really great sustainable energy without that crazy crash. Check them out, foursigmatic.com forward slash model. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash model. And guess what? 
you get 15% off. All right, 15% off everything that they carry. Head over, check them out, forcingmatic.com. Now let's get to the Apple Podcast Review of the Week. Another five-star review titled Love from Shanghai by Shanghai Thunder. Sean, thanks for your insights and authentic sharing. As someone that is constantly traveling and is based in Shanghai, China, you have helped my energy levels immensely. Also, I got my entourage on Lion's Mane and Organifi. Love from Shanghai. Awesome. Thank you so much for leaving me that review. And big shout out to Shanghai. That is absolutely amazing. And everybody, listen, if you've yet to do so, please pop over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review for the show and let everybody know what you think of the show. And I appreciate that so very much. And on that note, let's get to our special guest and our topic of the day. Our guest today is the incredible Kevin Curry. And he's a food blogger who's inspired millions of men and women to eat healthy and stay fit without sacrificing that flavor. Curry has amassed more than 2 million social media followers and is the founder of one of the top ranked food and drink apps, Fit Men Cook. He's been featured on the Today Show, Live with Kelly and Ryan, Men's Health and many other places. And right now, you can get your hands on a copy of the brand new book, Out Today. Go and pick it up. Fit Men Cook. And this is where he shares 100 plus easy, quick meal prep recipes designed to help save money, time, and most importantly, live a healthy life every day. And I'd like to welcome to the Modern Health Show, my man, Kevin Curry. What's up, man? What's up, man? How, How you, you doing, doing, bro? Good to see you, man. Thank you for Good having me. You. Thank you for coming yeah. out to hang out. Of course, man. This nice, fancy studio. Got me feeling hey, like a know. celeb in here. You got know. the lights. You got are. The, got the mic, too. Had to bring it out for you, man. You <laughs> got the are bottle that. water in the, in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> we just We fancy, man. Are you fancy, fancy, bro. You too fancy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I've been following you for a minute now and just like diving into your world i think it's so incredible man i mean just how do you feel right now the book is out how do you feel thank you man you know i actually got that book yesterday finally i was able to look and put my hands on the real copy and i don't know it was just like something just kind of came over me i was finally able to just sigh for the first time mm. in, in like a few months yeah. i actually wrote this book about two years ago mm. and it's just not coming out wow. so to see and to see the final product yeah. and then to think about all the different things that went into making this and bringing the book together from the photography, from the styling, from the recipe testing, from all of it, uh, yeah. from just every single email. It was yeah. just putting, seeing the final product, it's now worth it. Oh man, that means so yeah. much. I know, and I know that feeling, yeah. but, and I also know the work ethic that you have and what you put into it is just amazing. It's so oh. beautiful to see. And I told you this, like when we first connected, like your videos on IG legit make me hungry. <laughs> Thank you, you know? man. And that's like, the, that's probably the greatest compliment is if yeah. like you, you're fooling around with food and it makes the person hungry. Because not all pictures do. Someone's just like, <laughs> what is that? Why yeah. would I, why yeah. would I do that? Thank so you. yeah, man, super excited. So I, what I want to do, I want to dive into your superhero origin story, man. Okay. I want to know what, what got you inspired to to do this in the first place? You know, when did you kind of fall in love with food and with cooking? Like, how did this all take place? Yeah, you know, my relationship with food is, is actually pretty long. You know, I grew up in the South. Um, my dad is from South Carolina and my mom is from, from New Orleans, mm. from Louisiana region. And um, I, so I grew up with good food in the house, period. So every Sunday we were just, we had our either it was some roast beef or some smothered chicken we had greens on the, during the holidays we had gumbo we had jambalaya we had all those just amazing things and so i grew up knowing what good flavor was and is and mm. also i grew up in texas and yeah. you know texas we have some of the best mexican food second to mexico yeah. you know yeah. and just Having all these amazing cuisines and flavors around me just really influenced me. Now, yeah. the bad part of that is that I just wasn't um, versed at all in healthy eating. Mm. So I just carried a lot of bad habits that I had learned from my childhood mm -hmm. into my adulthood. And it wasn't until this was way back in the early stages of Facebook when people could post a picture of you and then it just pop up on your feed. Yeah. That, so I went that, to that the tag. Yeah, man. man, the security features <laughs> were, weren't there yet. So I went to this wedding and somebody tagged me in this photo and I went to go check it out. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah good. And man, when I tell you, it was one of the greasiest looking photos I've mm. ever seen. And I, 
untag myself and I was just thinking, I don't have any good friends at all because nobody <laughs> told me that I was looking like this. So um, I did what most people tried to do. I tried to go and out train a um, poor diet and I started yeah. just doing a whole bunch of cardio and running. And for the moment, I actually lost some weight. And mm -hmm. then again, my, my addiction to flavor and to good food brought me back to the same spot again, except with like more weight. So I actually finally just broke down and went to Half Price Books and I brought literally every single book they had there about nutrition. And my goal was just to learn more about food because I was thinking that, you know, we got this entire world and these amazing cuisines and I don't think that God will put us on here on this earth and say, you can't eat this, 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 and this, and this. I just think it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So what I realized, too, that it was just much more about how we prepare the foods. It's about portion control and about eating right for you and your goals and your body. And that's how I began my journey. Now, the story of Fit Man Cook, <laughs> I got to admit, people think that now, now it is this really big yeah. community, right? Yeah. And we're Huge helping, brand. yeah, you know, and we're helping people. People are, thanks so much for this recipe. I added this too, guys. And everyone's just sharing stuff. And it's just, it's wonderful and beautiful. It didn't start out that way. So <laughs> Fit Man Cook was actually my like side hustle in a sense, because I didn't want to pay another trainer to help me to lose weight. So I said, let me get, maybe if I post every single meal that I'm eating like online, then maybe people will actually give me free feedback. Mm. It was a way to kind of crowdsource my diet and to gain the mm. system, you know, and get stuff for free. Yeah. And the reverse happened. I realized that people were out there just like me who were disenchanted with these cookie cutter diets. Um, and they just begin to follow me and follow my journey through food because that's all that's all that I was doing. I was posting, you know, the recipe, the steps, and also the macros because I wanted it to be as open and accessible as possible so that I could get good feedback for my diet. This was around, this was in 2012. Mm -hmm. And what I realized at the time that that was kind of breaking the mold in social media because before um, that content was, was gated. It was premium content that you had to pay a trainer for. They had yeah. to pay, pay for like a program. And I was just sharing it freely and mm -hmm. liberally. And I didn't know at the time that that was kind of this new trend in social media mm -hmm just to share out everything and then to find other ways to monetize. Right. The freemium model. The freemium, yeah. Yeah. That's incredible, man. So I didn't know that. That's yeah. because people see the end result a lot of times. You right. Know, they see the after, but no one went into it. And it initially it was kind of selfish. Yeah. You know, but now like, dude, you give so much value and it's just incredible. But my, my question is, why fit men cook? Oh, <laughs> I came up with the name literally in, within about five minutes. Um, my my original name on Tumblr was Fitness and Faith mm. because at the time I was pretty depressed and food food and cooking was also my pathway back to feeling better about myself. And so I would post um, things that I was doing, journaling, mm -hmm. and, and also my workouts just a little bit because I was basically sharing out my, my pathway back to feeling better about Kevin. Mm. Um, and I wanted to change the name on my Instagram, so I came up with Fit Man Cook because I realized at the time that food was my problem. Like, I would spend three hours in the gym each day for a full year, and I looked the exact same. And it wasn't until I got the food piece right that mm. the weight just began just to literally fall off my body I began to see improvements in my performance in the gym and everything changed for me. So I was realizing like, oh, okay, our, our bodies are, are literally are made in the kitchen, you know? And, you know, if you want to live this fit life, then fit men cook. You've got to cook. You've yeah. got to cook your way healthy. Yeah, that's dope, man. When I first saw it mm -hmm. and I saw you, like I immediately felt connected because for me, I'm sure fit men cook actually means different things for different people right. as well. But for me, it was just like hitting on a big stereotype, you know, mm. like men cook, first of right. all, right? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. And then it's like fit men cook. I was like, hell yeah. yeah. You know, I hit the Dr. Dre, you know, <laughs> in my mind, just like, yes, that's so powerful, man. Yeah. And so real. And just like breaking those walls down because the reality is, like you said, our bodies are really made in the kitchen. And if you can get that piece down, it doesn't mean you have to like spend your life in the kitchen. We're gonna talk about this right. too, like some really great strategies. And also I wanna talk a little bit deeper about why making your own food or just family food 
influences our health. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. But I just, for me, that's what it meant. It was like, yeah. you know, breaking a big stereotype down. Absolutely. So next question I want to talk to you okay. about is from your perspective, you know, why is cooking such an important tool today, like right now? Yeah, that's such a, it's such a profound question and, and something that I don't think that we think about, but health has become a big business. And before um, it wasn't like that. You had the TV dinner type of era. Um, and then all of a sudden there was this really big push in the media. I'm not sure which celebrities possibly caused it, but everyone was really concerned about their health. Like all of a sudden Oprah was probably behind this too. Yeah, people oh, like yeah. Oprah, Auntie, Auntie <laughs> you know, o, Auntie yes. Oprah will get people right. <laughs> she got to get people together. So Americans and the whole world really just became much more concerned about what they were putting into their bodies. And all of a sudden, and this is my own rant here, companies saw this trend about people wanting to take better care of themselves. And they, mm. and so we had all these buzzwords, low calorie, fat free. Mm, yeah. And they began to package up all these different products. Um, the frozen dinners, the lean hot pockets, uh, <laughs> the hot lean pocket. cuisines. Yeah, hey man, those were hitting, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> those got me through college. Um, and other types of products. And I think that through that, we, we began to put all kinds of stuff besides food into our bodies. Yeah. Um, and so what I realized about cooking is that cooking, with cooking, you know exactly what you're putting into your body. Exactly. You know yeah. exactly what you're putting in. You, you don't have to worry about um, GMOs. You don't have to worry about preservatives, extra sodium. You could actually customize a meal for you and your family and for your health, more importantly. And so I think that cooking is really important because it allows you to become a lot more competent with food, mm -hmm. too. Um, sometimes whenever you um, buy a finished meal, the meal may taste great, but you don't know what the individual flavors of the food taste like. Mm. And when you begin to cook, you kind of increase your kitchen IQ. Yeah. So that way, you know, okay, this bell pepper tastes great here and it has this flavor. I wonder if I can put this in this recipe over there. Mm. And so more or less with cooking, you're actually giving yourself more ideas. Mm -hmm. And if you give yourself ideas, then you can fuel your health and wellness journey for a lifetime. If you're just come, you know, buying things like out of the box, it's fine for like convenience, but for the long haul, is that sustainable? Right. So cooking is the most sustainable form of wellness that we have. Absolutely. Man, that's so powerful. Kitchen IQ. I love <laughs> that so much, man. That's that's incredible. So I want to kind of dive in now and talk a little bit about what, how do we do this, man? How do we make a, a, a yeah. great meal? And if we could, you've got these, these 10 kitchen commandments, right? Yeah. And I just thought that was brilliant right off the bat. Uh, so can, if we can, let's just go through some of those. Sure, sure, sure. The first one is something that I think that we're all kind of guilty of, mm. and that's what I call aspirational buys. Mm. And one of my commandments is buy only what you're going to eat. For meal prep. Ooh, I like this already, And man. when you walk into a grocery store, you see all the fresh produce, all, all the colors, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go and get this. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to eat this over here. I'm going to grab some spinach. I'm going to buy this broccoli, I guess. Okay, this red char, these apples. And you know darn well that in about two <laughs> weeks, <laughs> you're going to reach into that produce drawer yeah. and throw that away. Yeah. Maybe about one week. So the whole idea here is when you're looking at meal prep, you've got to approach it in a much more incremental and small way. Mm. Don't try don't try to boil the ocean on day one. Yeah. So only buy what you're going to eat. And that is frustrating because if you go through the food, it's going to cause you to go back to the grocery store. And that's a good thing mm -hmm. because then you can buy something else and you can have variety. And then it's not seen as a chore. It's just much more seen as a part of your routine. So with that, because this is huge and now this is going to give me something to to prove to my wife uh -huh. all right, with this first <laughs> commandment. And because she would have a lot of these aspirational buys, like for real, real, I I get what I <laughs> what I'm going to have for sure, mm -hmm. you know, and um so my wife, for the longest time, she kept buying corn, like these mm. ears of corn. Oh. And she just, cause you know, like in Kenya, like it was one of her favorite things. And I was like, babe, 
you're not going to make the corn. Like you, it always ends up sitting there for like two weeks. Like, and she's like, no, I'm going to make it this time. I promise. And she get it, you know, it's got like the covering on and everything. Mm -hmm. Like she wanted to do it the fresh, fresh. And sure enough, like even to, because I would think it would inspire her just to disprove me, yeah, but it still didn't work. You yeah. know, that corn still, I'm throwing it away. I'm like, you know, and then we have our little thing. But also <laughs> at this point, of course, like I just think it's cute and funny, but just coming into it, not, with this aspirational, like, let's actually know what we're gonna get for these specific meals. We're gonna come back again and it's all good. So I That's like right. that, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also you can buy frozen. A lot of people don't do not do that. And you can buy frozen and keep that in your freezer. So that way, if you do make an aspirational buy, then that stuff won't go bad. Exactly. And also with free, and it just depends on the different food, the different nutrients, but it can really lock in and kind of um, hold on to a lot of the nutrition yeah. with the freezing process. So, Absolutely. you know, it's better to have some frozen blueberries than some dead ones, you There's know, with, the, with the moldy mold on it. <laughs> and you know, what they're you know what they look like too, all that fur on them. You open up the fridge, right. look like science projects. Right, right. <laughs> what are you doing? So uh, let's move on to number two, the second commandment. Yeah, so the second one I say is to set a goal. I think that people want to eat healthy and they always say that this is gonna be my year to make a change, this moment right here. And they do that without making an actual goal. And what happens with, with the goal is that I'm not saying that it's got to be something that's super detailed, but a goal helps to focus your efforts. And you want to have like a purposeful type of diet. So let's say you want to lose 10 pounds or so. That goal is a measurable goal and it's actionable because mm -hmm. now you're going to be accountable for what you're putting into your body and for what you're eating. Let's say that you want to do a marathon or like a Spartan race or something like that. Mm -hmm. When you have these types of goals, it really helps to focus in like what you're doing and it makes your diet worth something. It kind of makes you think about the everyday intentional actions that even when you're not like in the kitchen, what are you doing to move closer to that goal? Yeah. And I think many times people just approach healthy eating and meal prep just with like, this is what I have to go and do. And when you approach it like that, when it's not as organized, when it's not as structured, what happens is that you will do this honestly for about a good seven days, maybe two weeks, but after that, it just dies off. Yeah. So you want something that's going to continually keep you in the race, yeah. in the um, you know, focused. I love that so much, and you literally just described because this this clearly shows me <clears throat> the amount of people that you've interacted with with this because. Seven days, I call it, that's the new phase, yeah. right? That first seven days is new. I'm yeah. on it. You know, hashtag uh, life transformation, you know, like everything <laughs> is different. And then new me. <laughs> that second part, you know, when you get to that uh, second seven days, you know, so there's mm -hmm. eight to 14, I call this the struggle phase. This is when your brain is like, wait a minute, I know you, okay? Mm -hmm. You think you're about to take control, but let's just be honest, you know? And a lot of people, this during that phase is when they start to quit because you start to feel like your brain, literally, we're conditioned to do things a certain way. And everything about us is trying to create that consistency and routine. When you change that routine, you're fighting the way that your brain is wired. And it's a beautiful process if you become aware of it and that you can create new connections. You yeah. know, that's what's so amazing. But what can help you to get through that struggle period is having that goal, yeah. like you said, and being clear on that when we're doing, and I love this, man. I did not expect you to say that because I purposely did not look <laughs> at those commandments because I wanted to talk about them. Mm -hmm. And the this second, this second one looking at like creating, having a goal that our meal prep kind of sprouts from in yeah. the first place is just so brilliant. So I yeah, love that, man. Absolutely. So third commandment. Okay, third one. You know what? I'm going to jump around okay. and do another one. Okay. Um, here's one that you may not expect. Thou shalt take a break. Hmm. So think that when people approach meal prep, they try to go all in and they do everything at once and they try to overhaul their diet. And I say always just to start small with like one meal and, and to build, your, build up your confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, and let's say that you've been going now for like a few months or just one month. I think that it's really important to remind people to take a break from the meal prep process. Now, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that your diet just goes away, you know, and that you're not making healthy choices. It just means that allow yourself to indulge maybe or experience something else. So whether that means to go to the restaurant and make a healthy option there, mm -hmm. I think that's really good. One of the things that got me into cooking really into the flavorful cooking was to um, cook what I like to eat. And what that means is, let's say that 
I really love quesadillas. I love them. I can eat them every single day, but they're not good for me. So there's a cooking challenge there. How could I make this much more nutritious for my body? So we're going to break down the fundamental elements of what a quesadilla is. And how can I substitute in healthy fats, complex carbs, and lean protein instead? And infuse that with flavor. That's why cooking is so important because yeah. you remember your kitchen IQ is now yeah. increased. And you say, oh, my God, I can put bell peppers in here now. Yeah. Oh, my God, hummus could be good in this too. Or guacamole. So if the quesadilla is all your favorite food, then you can deconstruct that recipe and then make it really flavorful, right? Yeah. So eating out oftentimes it inspires other ideas of what yeah. you could do. Eating out will get you to think about, man, this was a really good at Monte Cristo sandwich. How could I make this healthier? How could I make mm -hmm. a healthy version of this? I love this mac and cheese. Yeah. How could I flip this recipe? So I think taking a break every once in a while from the healthy eating or just from just from you preparing foods is a really good thing. Mm, man, I love that so much. People out here flipping houses. You need to flip these recipes. <laughs> oh, you know? I love that. Man, <laughs> flip this meal. <laughs> flip this meal because literally this is, and this is why I was so excited about this episode and why I think that it's so timely and, and valuable for people is that that was the first step that I made because for mm. me, making a decision to transform my own health, you know, my rock bottom, my point of entry was just like what I saw on television, which was like slim fast at first, oh, you know, shake for breakfast, shake for lunch and a sensible dinner. I'm surprised that yeah. I didn't get locked up for, for taking somebody <laughs> out because I was hungry. I was hangry, bro. I was hangry. And, yeah. you know, of course, like I lost a few pounds, gained it back. And I, Eventually, you know, by asking the right questions, and I love the statement, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And the right books start to come, mm. come to me when I started asking better questions. And my next transition point, which is, was huge, changed everything, was flipping my meals. So, okay, I love McDonald's. How can I have my burger and my, and my fries? you know, but upgrade this dramatically. And so I went, started going to Whole Foods and Wild Oats was around at the time. Get the grass fed beef, get in my sprouted bun and get in the oven fries organic with the spices on it, you yeah. know? And, um, but now I'm doing, instead of the whatever else, the apple turnover, whatever, now I'm getting like broccoli or whatever, you know, just adding in some vegetables that I would eat as well. And I had pleasure because I was having that burger that I wanted. And also having the process of getting my behind in the kitchen and making my own food. Now I, there's that quality control yeah. that you talked about. So so many of these things are real. These are the things that I did. Yeah. And now you're just sharing this with everybody else. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, that leads me to another one. It's actually thou shalt embrace variety. Mm -hmm. So what you were talking about, um, about tasting other things and, and deconstructing you know, the burger, it's the exact same thing when it comes to meal prep. I think especially people in the fitness world, and I hope that trainers are listening to this too because I think that trainers sometimes they can get into this mindset that I'm only going to eat for fuel and competitors can do that too. Yeah, That's not the way that most people are built. Yeah. And I think I that agree. and sometimes we inadvertently kind of push that onto clients. Yeah, they, and, and they say... Uh, Eat to live, don't live to eat. Right. <laughs> and that's and that's great <laughs> for about a good five days. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's why they're always having to constantly encourage their client. Yeah. So I, I think that one thing that you have got to be ready to do for meal prep is to embrace variety. There are tons of different cuisines and flavors in the world. And I think that you just need to find little by little, like small ways to, to introduce those things into your own diet. For me, it looked like this. About every two weeks, I would introduce a brand new complex carbon to my diet. And I, if I didn't know how to cook it, I would just go to Google and type in vegetable and then recipe. And that's how I began to add variety. That's how I mm, learned a lot more about Thai cuisine, about Mediterranean, um, about different Latin cuisine and the different flavors out there. So that way you can always have something different and your diet, it keeps your palate guessing while mm. also nourishing your body. Oh man, so good, so mm. good. And also this is just, this gets back to what our genes expect of us as well. If we wanna get like yeah. to a deeper level of this, our ancestors, we ate based on what was available. And now today, mm. just because the same thing is available 24 seven. You're missing out on so many 
key components. And I, I just did a show recently that looked at the crazy things that's going on because so many of these things, like we ask these questions, why do people tend to get sick during the winter time, mm. right? And some of the things that I brought forth in that episode was we have a change in the guard of sorts with our microbiome. Our gut bacteria literally changes based on the season. Hmm. Also, our genes, about a quarter of our genes, you know, so just over 5,000 of our genes, literally change a genetic switch, right? Epigenetic change happens in our genes just based on the time of year it is, hmm. all right? And so with those two things coupled together, what are you putting into your body that's associated with the change of seasons as well, you know? so proactively looking for and, and experiencing more and having some variety. Of course, I love what you said too, man, about, you know, you, you cook what you like to eat or love to eat. Mm -hmm. So we can have that piece, but you know, we can continue to add in some variety as well. Absolutely. Man, it's important. Good. It's important. This wellness journey is not just some quick sprint for you to lose the last 10 pounds for this photo shoot or for your vacation. This is a lifelong journey. Absolutely, man. So we've got, I think that's four. It's four. We got in the bank. Let's do like a couple more. Okay. So another commandment that I think that people need to embrace is multitasking. Mm. Thou shall multitask in the kitchen. And one of the top complaints that I've always heard from people is that cooking just takes too much time. Mm -hmm. And they're right, but they're also wrong. And I think it's because we approach cooking in a very linear fashion in a sense that like, let's say that I want to cook chicken, rice, and broccoli. People literally cook like this. All right, let me go ahead and cook the rice. 30 minutes go by. All right, great. So that's cooked. Let me go ahead now and prepare this broccoli. I'm going to go and steam it. Then I cook that. And then after that, they will go and cook the chicken. So in the book, I try to teach people to multitask, that like you're always moving in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Treat the kitchen almost like a workout, almost like a hit workout, mm -hmm. where you go from station to station to station to station. So... While the rice is cooking, we are seasoning up the chicken, and then we're going to put it into the skillet. And then while that is cooking up in the skillet, we're going to set a pot of water on the oven, and we're going to start to boil the broccoli. And so by the end of 30 minutes, everything is already done. So what used to take now maybe an hour and a half process is now done in less than 45 minutes. And I, and I think that's a really important point because we've got to move past the the um, the complaints about cooking yeah. and the excuses that you know we give. And here's the catch: cooking does and it can take a lot of time, but it's not until you start cooking that you can lessen the amount of time that you spend in the kitchen. Mm. So you actually have to do it. Mm. And it just makes sense. That's what, like with anything in life, yeah. you know. But when you said the multitasking, I, I got nervous. Okay. You know, because a lot of stuff that we talk about is like to get rid of the multitasking, but mm. that's not really multitasking. Mm. That's one thing that you're focusing on, but yeah. it's like a dance. You yeah. know, like when I see your pictures, it, you look like a DJ in there, right? Uh. Straight up. Like a couple of times I actually thought it's like, oh, he's a DJ too. And I click on it, I was like, oh, that's Kale. Uh. You know, that's not a turntable. And so, but also, and when you were talking about this, it, it brought something up, which is so beautiful. And what I see with my wife, even yesterday, with multitasking, your brain is really great at if it's two completely different things. But if you're like multitasking on different work things, like I'm trying to write and answer emails and post on social media, you're gonna have a little bit of a problem. You're gonna have this switching cost is what we call it. And, but if you're doing something else, like you're doing your meal prep, but you're also listening to a podcast, right? You're doing the Perfect. meal prep, but you're also, you know, listening to an audio book or for my wife, she was watching some show. I don't know what it was, but it brings her joy. You know, it's her little, you know, That's whatever what it is. That's what I do too, man. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> my Hulu stays on in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And she's about that Hulu. Yeah. I'm like, what has Hulu got now? Hulu you know? is wonderful. Yeah. It has all my shows on there. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? And I've never shared this on the show before. My family is big into like these singing competition shows. I don't know why, where it started, but like right now we're like hardcore on the four. Have you seen the four? No, my mom is into this show and she texts me, you got to turn in and tune in. I'm like, mom, I haven't, <laughs> I have not watched in. any singing competition in, since like American Idol. Wow. Maybe when, when Fantasia won. Okay. But yeah. it's a good show. Yeah. I'm guessing oh, it's. Oh man, it's, it's great. It's okay. great because they battle. 
Yeah. You know, so it's that it's got that puffy, you know, or P. Diddy. <laughs> who, depending on the person listening, you might know yeah. him at different names. Yeah. Sean Combs, but it's got that because you remember he had ba- making the band back oh, in the day. Oh yeah, that was like, now that was a good singing competition show. Yeah, that so you got funny. like go up against each other. You know, you're like it's the funniest thing to see people singing against each other, like up a battling, like singing and like giving them shade. You know. Okay. But anyway, just your description alone just makes me want to tune in. <laughs> it's <laughs> and and I mean the quality of people that they have on the show itself mm-hmm. and then it's got the color uh the the character to it because you know puffy is on the show and yeah. dj khaled and fergie is like the hostess of the show and uh yeah it's, it's really good man but i haven't talked about this but it's a little <laughs> bit of a of a, a family tradition that we have now is to sit and watch these shows together yeah see and yeah. you could be cooking in the kitchen at the same time there maybe you go. right getting that getting that yeah. in. yeah <laughs> so i love that so much man so um you know what we've got We'll maybe do like one or two more commandments, but we'll do that right after this quick break. So sit tight. We'll be right back. One of the biggest barriers of entry to eating healthy is the expense involved. This is one of the biggest reasons that people use for not buying better products is that it just costs too much. And there are incredible grocery stores, mom and pop spots out there, chain stores like Whole Foods that are great. They're providing a lot of value and curating a lot of great products. Not always great, but a lot of great products. But the nickname is often Whole Paycheck because there's a pretty big markup for the whole process of getting the best products there on a store shelf. And so I really wanted to do something to help eliminate that barrier of entry to help people to get more access to healthy food and to get products that are curated and getting the very best brands that are doing good for people and for the planet. And this is why I utilize Thrive Market. Thrive Market provides many of the same products that you would find in stores like Whole Foods, but at 25 to 50% off most of the retail costs, which is absolutely mind blowing. You could save 25 to 50% off many of your favorite products, your coconut oils, your nut butters, your snack bars for the kids, kale chips, whatever it is you're into. Also, personal care products. It's another big thing that's taking place right now is a shift in public consciousness and understanding it's not just what you put in your body, it's what you put on your body as well. And getting rid of all these toxic chemicals, but still getting the very best products. Also, household products as well, cleaning products. So you're not putting all these chemicals and things like that that are gonna impact your health and the health of the people that you love. And so they have all the best products, 25 to 50% off and curated in whatever food approach that you subscribe to, whether it's gluten-free, paleo, vegetarian, all of these things are categorized for easy shopping. All right, it's absolutely amazing. I love Thrive Market so much. Save so much money. We literally save hundreds of dollars every year by buying many of our staples from Thrive Market. All right, so head over there right now, check them out. It's thrivemarket.com forward slash model health together as one word. So that's model health together as one word. And guess what? Not only are you going to save 25 to 50% off of products anyways, your first purchase, you're going to save an additional 25% off your entire cart. All right. It's amazing. Plus also free shipping, plus also free 30 day membership. And you're going to want to keep this membership because it's just going to keep giving back over and over and over again. And giving back is another big thing that Thrive Market is doing because every paid membership, they provide a free membership to a family in need. All right, this could be uh, a teacher, this could be a veteran, this could be a low income household to keep paying it forward to reduce that barrier of entry so that more people can get access to the very best healthy food. All right, so definitely head over there, check them out, thrivemarket.com forward slash model health. And now back to the show. All right, we're back and we're talking with my man, Kevin Curry. He's got an incredible name for being a <laughs> chef and doing what he's doing, by the way. And um, new book out right now. Definitely just jumped to the top of my list of favorite cookbooks. And it's the Fit Man Cook cookbook. And you can pick this up right now. Again, 100 plus meal prep recipes for men and women. So don't get caught up in the name. And also, mm-hmm. if you've got a, a man in your life, that you want to cook some good stuff for that's healthy but also tastes phenomenal make sure that you add this to your library and so before the break we we're talking about his 10 meal prep commandments that he has has and we're going to go through a couple of these we i think we've been through maybe five of them now so yeah. let's do one or two more what would the next one be i would say another good one is thou shall not waste food mm. so 
oftentimes whenever we meal prep, we just meal prep way too much. Because again, we don't only we not only do the aspirational buys, but we also do aspirational cooking. So we'll make a huge pot of quinoa, or we'll make too many chicken breasts, um, and we'll just have that at the end of the week. And oftentimes, or even produce, oftentimes we'll just toss it. As much as people don't want to talk about it, you know, you toss it. So this book actually talks about the importance of reducing the food waste in our um, in our lives. Mm. So whether that's incorporating that into a a beautiful garden frittata or a casserole, I just really encourage people to do that like a lot more because it's really important. Um, I think that we have we we can spend so much money, and if you look at your yeah. grocery bill and break it down at the end of the month, you can easily spend about four hundred bucks yeah. just on food. And then at the end of the weeks, if you can think about how much food that you've actually tossed, those are savings. Those are savings, and it's also mm. really good food. Right. So what are we doing with that extra food? Yeah. We're actually going to talk a lot more about this topic on the show because I just came across some research that has found that we can literally feed the world consistently. Every person on the planet can be well fed just with the amount of food waste that we have alone in and of itself. Yeah. And so looking at this a little bit more holistically, and by the way, so I mentioned that corn issue yeah. with my wife. But from from my perspective, for us, like I grew up different, and she's from Kenya. Like they didn't have a lot of food. But true story. Her one of her, uh, and I've seen the, the picture many times. It's so cute. But it's her birthday party, uh -huh. and she's just got the biggest smile on her face. I think she's like six at the time, and just yeah. so cute. And it's just like, oh, you know, you got your birthday cake, or whatever. It wasn't a cake. It wasn't like Betty Crocker. It mm. was, uh, I believe, it's called Mokimu, which is like um, mashed potatoes, corn. It's video peas different name is it yeah yeah and um that was their cake that's in the book too i actually wow. made the same recipe <laughs> yeah. because it's such a nutritious meal mm -hmm. it is it's very nutritious crazy, right yeah and so she didn't grow up with a lot like nobody's and even in my family growing up it's like eat it all eat it all right <laughs> and so <laughs> if you plan on getting up to do anything yeah. you better clean that plate and so for me just coming into it of course it's like moving past my scarcity consciousness and also using myself as a trash can, how about we just be a little bit more strategic in the food that we're buying, right? And be a little bit more uh, judicious in the amount of, because you can always go back and get a little bit more too for the plate that you're making for yourself, right? you know? Because for me, I'm a seconds and thirds kind of guy, you know? But if I'm starting off right out of the gate and I might not even be that hungry and I've got the seconds and thirds already on my one plate yeah. and I've got the eat it all consciousness, you know, that can be trouble. So I love that uh, commandment in our in our meal prep and our approach in the first place. And there's so many incredible things layered there, man. That's, that's awesome. Um, just to shift gears now, because yeah. again, people can pick up the book and get the rest of the commandments. <laughs> Super valuable. I want to ask you about the <clears throat> recipes in the book itself. What were the qualities? What were you looking for in the recipes that you decided to put into the book? Oh, that's a really great question. You know, for the recipes in the book, they kind of follow my same philosophy on food. Um, and I got to kind of go back to how I got started in the kitchen first yeah. with that. Um, the recipes are, are based off of foods that I actually like to eat. But I also put them together because I wanted to show people a practical approach to cooking meals each week. And I think that one of the biggest hiccups that people have are just like, all right, I can cook my chicken breast, but what do I eat with it? And so right. I was really heavy on showing different ways to cook the sides mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And then just showing how you can put together a, a, a like complete meal that way. Now, my cooking philosophy was inspired by my own personal journey. Yeah. Um, in 2008, I was in grad school, graduated, and the stock market, you know, just went crazy. Right. I had to move back home with my parents, and it was a really humbling thing for me. At the time, I was also, I had just um, kind of gotten dumped as well. Mm. So I wasn't feeling the best about Kevin. Yeah. Um, I got depressed, and I had zero money after grad school. And one thing that I had to do was go to the welfare office and get some food stamps. And that was crazy because... I had a consulting background. I had all this. Um, I was great um, before financially, and then all of a sudden I just had nothing. So I was on a really small income and still like depressed. 
So one thing that I had to do was I had to learn how to be creative with just a little bit. Mm. So the recipes are inspired by that and that they have to be budget friendly. They have to be and budget may be different depending on where you are in the world because quinoa is not that cheap when you're in Europe, but yeah. it's cheap over here. You know, it's cheaper over here. Um, they have to be budget friendly, um, not take too much time and they had to taste good. Just those three things. Mm. And so with that philosophy, I, I set out to do the Fitman community and I wrote this book too with that in mind that some things are going to be a little bit more costly than others, but overall, you know, with the different um, um, like substitutions here in the book, people can kind of carve out and find out what they can do for their diet, for their health, and also with their pocketbook. Incredible, man. Incredible. I did not know that, yeah. man. That's a, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's incredible, man. And mm. to have that kind of experience and, and that perspective. So this is big, you know, it's bigger than food. Mm -hmm. You know, food is is a great bridge yeah. to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Yeah, f food is. It, it just impacts so much of who we are and what we do. Not only is it nourishing for us physically, but also for our mental health. And and I say this very much so truthfully that like Fit Men Cook helped to save my life per se. Um, I got a melatonin, not melatonin, I got plenty of melatonin. <laughs> <laughs> I got a serotonin boost um, whenever I could share something online and have people who in other parts of the world say, hey, tried that, loved it. And then also just there is something that kind of happens whenever you step into the kitchen and you're putting things together and you're seeing something come to life and you're tasting it. There's a sense of, gratification and like appreciation and like achievement too that you get from that and I didn't know it at the time but I was basically cooking myself back to better health so I encourage people too that even you know with the mental health aspect that cooking is not just seen as you got to eat the right foods because you know like nutrients wise but also the sense of achievement that you get from creating something is also pretty significant yeah Dude, this is so good. You're one of the few people that, because of this, the energy behind what you're doing, that I, I, I very much have like a positive perimeter put around my <laughs> my brain food, you know, the things yeah. that even on social media that I'm subscribed to or that, you know, that I follow. And so that's amazing, man. Well, one of the things also I know about your posts are you also do the Spanish. So yeah. you do the, the, the English, you know, uh, uh, sub with it, you know, caption, and then you have the Spanish translation yeah. of that. What, what's what's going on with that? Yeah, it was really important to me. Uh, about a couple of years ago when I was in college, I, I wanted to delay the real world. So I went away to, to Quito, Ecuador, and I um, lived there for almost about a year. And I worked in a restaurant and I worked at a local gym. I didn't lift weights or anything. I just didn't know what I was doing. I actually, you know, it's a funny story here. <laughs> I actually taught hip hop dance classes in oh. Quito, Ecuador, and this and the crazy thing is I couldn't dance, but they believed me because I was black. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, "Oh yeah, absolutely," <laughs> and I got by. Kevin C. Ke Kevin, Kevin C's, C's class, cool. yeah. been, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, I can do anything, gosh. and they believed me. And these people, <laughs> like, oh. I got videos in my mind just about that experience, and so that was important to me to continue on with that. And also, whenever you look at the diabetes rates and like heart disease rates, they are pretty significant in the black and brown communities. And so I wanted to be able to, like, with my platform, reach as many people as possible. That's really important. And growing up in Texas, I mean, you just need to, you know, to know Spanish too. You don't have to know it to get around, but it's just, it, it's a good thing. And so um, in my quest to kind of globalize this, this mission, uh, you know, this purpose of spreading healthy eating with the world, it just, language is is one of them but you know i can't speak all languages of course but that's again it comes back to cooking and food like it's a universal language yeah. and it connects us and it binds us and it transcends all these other barriers you know that we have yeah. that we can it comes back to the flavor and the process and the way it nourishes our bodies love it man it's mm -hmm. inclusion like it's inclusion you just yeah brought that man, that's so powerful. And yeah. I, I didn't even think from that perspective. I just thought that that was some Rico Suave stuff. Ah, that you were doing, to. You know? <laughs> and, <laughs> but, I mean, made. it's just, it helps people to get 
involved, you know? And it, it also, wow. if you can speak like, oh, that's speaking to me, that's right. my language, you know? That's that's powerful, man. Yeah. Just a big, big respect for doing that, man. And so another thing that I saw on one of your posts, I think it was IG story, and you talked about how a lot of folks have this all or nothing mentality when it comes to their food religion, right? So oh, it's just man. either like, I'm either keto or I'm out. I'm either, you know, and also when you don't do the keto, then you're, you know, you're going to die or whatever, or you're yeah. you're out of the the tribe and you're, you know, yeah. and um, same thing, you know, it's all or nothing. You're vegan or you're nothing. Right. You're uh, South Beach diet or nothing. So can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. It burns me up a little bit because it's just one of those things that people, that, that, that we've got to stop telling people that they have to subscribe to a certain diet. And I'm not an absolutist in any way. I've tried the keto diet. I've tried the vegan diet. I've tried paleo. And those were things just to give me more ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think the purpose, and, it's, and I tell people, you know, my followers, it's perfectly fine to jump around and to try different diets. Mm -hmm. And I think the purpose of you doing that is to learn about the diet first off so you can become competent in it, but also walk away with what can I take from this to give me more ideas for my regular diet. Mm -hmm. And I think that once we, if we can just stop this whole thing, like it's keto or nothing, it's vegan or nothing, then people will just live happier and healthier lives. Yeah. Um, and it's funny <laughs> because a lot of the people that, that actually are the biggest advocates for these diets they're also the same ones that reach out to me offline mm. and say, hey, how can I transition? I don't want people to think that I'm this and that. Yeah. And I'm like, well, the first thing, you got to stop talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong. It's your yeah. diet. And what I, I think in the IG story, I was telling people to stay on their own plate. Just like when you're driving, stay yeah. in your own lane. It won't be any accidents. Stay on your own plate. And, and it's fine to share the joy of what you're eating, the joy of your diet, but do so in a way that, hey, this is what's working for me right now and I'm enjoying that. Yeah. And realize that there are other ways to arrive at wellness. And once you can embrace that, yeah. then you eating something else over there is, is no threat to me. It's just another form of wellness. Love it, man. And if you are getting a lot of this screenshot this oh and, and put tag people <laughs> me tag kevin and just let him know you know just do a quick screenshot yeah. uh that you're digging this episode because i'm just getting huge insights here as well stay on your plate get out <laughs> my plate stay on your plate bro. that's so powerful because that's something that it literally it pushes people away right because even though food is a connector and it's it's a it's a big factor of love and sharing you don't necessarily want somebody all in your plate. Absolutely. You know? And so it's just like that little bit of like self-respect and for yourself and also respecting other people and respecting their choices. Because some people are cool with like, you know, you take some of your wife's fries. My wife would bite my fingers <laughs> off, you know? <laughs> and so stay on your plate, stay on your plate. Yeah. Do something great for yourself and you can encourage other people to make changes with what's going on with their plate. Yeah. Not by bad talking them or, you know, having this all or nothing mentality. And by the way, so same thing. I know these guys, I know them. All right. <laughs> I've been them. Right. And we shared this before the show. I really feel that one of the things that makes me great at what I do is that I've done all of these things, but I mean, I go 120, you know, so if it's raw mm -hmm. food, you could forget about, like there's no, yeah. the stove doesn't work in my house, mm -hmm. you know, for a year, two years, three years, whatever it might be, or paleo or keto, whatever it is. And I know that I'm doing this and I'm bringing back valuable gifts of connection. And what I eventually did, because in my practice at the time, if I was into something, my patients, my clients were into it too. Like if I, this is what I'm into, you're gonna be into it. We're gonna find a way to make yeah. this work for you instead of making something that works for you, the, you know, the, the other yeah. way around. This is how it's really supposed to be. I pay attention to you, make something based on your needs. And so I really feel that when I kind of, and again, so knowing all these guys, I really strive to bring on the people who were outwardly say, you know, I am pro keto diet, but I'm not always keto. Yeah. You know, so the the one show that we did was a really, really big episode. Uh, I think it's close to maybe half a million folks have checked it out, is with Mark Sisson. And mm -hmm. he wrote the keto reset diet. Mm -hmm. And Mark said on the episode, I'm not always doing this, you right. know, like, and he shared with me as well, like, um, 
there's some, you know, whatever, some cheesecake or, you know, whatever right. it is. Like, I'm going to have some. But this is this is giving people valuable frameworks. And that's what they are. They're incredibly valuable frameworks. Give them ideas and you could eat yeah. for a lifetime. Exactly, man. So, so yeah. good, man. You know what? It's like 10 other things I want to talk to you about. <laughs> but I got to ask you about this, man. Okay. <laughs> so I want to ask you about this. And, um, you know, I read through your dedication here. And this one really jumped out for me. To my family, ever since I proposed the idea of quitting my job at the Thanksgiving table, you've taken every opportunity to encourage, pray for, and promote me. No matter what my wellness journey may reveal, I'm blessed to have already experienced some of the greatest health of all. And that's knowing what real love looks and feels like through each of you. Talk about that for me. It's kind of hard to... Um, it's all good, man. Well, no one's ever asked me that question before. And uh, so much of my wellness journey, I can't divorce um, my overall health um, in terms of my body from the mental part of that. Yeah. And my family, just as many of people listening... It's just one of the the strongest um, support systems that I've ever had. And uh, <laughs> also in that dedication is uh, I thought at this time I would be married. And I wrote a dedication um, to my then uh, girlfriend. Um, when I think about, you know, what I wrote there, oftentimes we can use health and wellness and training and working out to chase something. Or, or to a necessized pain of something. Yeah. Um, I hear, I, I get a lot of, you know, emails from guys or have about, oh, I, you know, it's a, I had a hard breakup and that's what prompted me to get into fitness. The same thing with women. And I think that people can use that to necessize it. And what I realized that I was doing a little bit of that too in my own life and not really dealing with some of the underlying issues. And I like that because... I had to thank them because if I never do another recipe, if I never work out ever again, um, if I never post anything on social media, if this all goes away, I know that my family still loves me. And I know where I'm loved and where I'm celebrated. And that's really important. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sorry. As you said, man, no, don't, don't, don't be sorry, bro. That's, that's so powerful. And I, I love how you articulated it here and saying that you've experienced some of the greatest health of all. And that's, that's what's up. You know, this is one of the things that we really bring to the table here on this show, because initially, man, food was just everything. I, I was devouring nutrition books, learning about it in college, mm -hmm. teaching it, but that's just one part of what real health looks like. Yeah. You know, a big part of that is your relationships right. and, and family. And that is the catalyst for everything else that we do. Yeah. And so if we can actually feed into that, you see, I'm throwing these puns in here. What's yeah. on the table and the yeah. feed it. I didn't know it's just <laughs> happening. It's coming out. But, you know, when I read that, I just knew that I wanted to ask you about it. And also, I got to ask you, Thanksgiving? He was <laughs> like... At Thanksgiving dinner, you're like, uh, um, guys, listen, yeah, I'm done. I know. Right? I'm corporate America. I'm out. And they're just like, they're going to support you. Yeah. So just take me through a little bit of that moment. Like what was going on? Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was maybe 2014 and sitting around the table and I had just been chewing on the idea to... I know chewing on the food. <laughs> we, I can't get away can't from stop, food. Won't stop. I know. <laughs> I just been chewing on the idea that I was going to quit my job and really do this full on um, it full time. And um, at the time, I was a brand manager um, for a large computer company, and I had just gotten a good job offer from um, Google. And wow. I'd flown down there um, for the interviews, got the job offer, um, and it was really exciting. But then I went to my old boss, and he gave me some of the best advice I've ever received. He says, yeah, well, Kev, you know, first off, if you're coming in here to ask me if you should take this job at Google, that means that you don't want the job, first mm -hmm. off, because nobody right. turns down that job. Um, secondly, 
I don't know what you're doing, but everyone here in the office is talking about this thing that you got called like Fit Men Cook, and I just think it's great. I'm not sure what it is, but it sounds amazing. You walked away from us a couple of years ago, but I would hire you back today. So you've got what it takes to make it. But most importantly, you want to be able to sit your grandkids down on your knee and say, hey, here's this thing called Fit Men Cook. Now, here's how I effed it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Or here's how I did it well. Now you go do it better. Mm. And I don't know, but it was just that practical way. He kind of just, yep. he just, it just kind of something just kind of triggered like in my mind, like this is something that I just have to go and do. And I picked the Thanksgiving dinner table and it, and it wasn't planned. It was just, we were all around the table just talking and I, something just said, this is the moment. And the reason why is I had all my family there. And I wanted to say something out loud. There's a lot of power whenever you can verbalize something. And when you speak it out of your mouth, it actually becomes real. And so I wanted to hear myself say it. And then I wanted to also make myself accountable to everybody else that, yes, this is something that I'm going to go ahead and do. And I thought, because we don't come from, I don't come from a really rich background at all. We don't, you know, we, we are a tight-knit family and we take, and we take care of each other. Um, so I, my own safety net is, you know, per se. And I thought they were going to be worried and they all got quiet. And my brother said, oh, finally. <laughs> yeah. And my mom was like, oh, this is great. This is just so great. Knowing that, like, I don't really have anything except for what I'm doing right now. And if I, and so, but there was so much power though. Again, I, I tell people, because they always ask me this about like starting your own thing. I think that it's great to jump out there. Now there is a big difference between faith and foolish. And sometimes we kind of blur the line right there. Mm -hmm. So, but if there is something that's keeping you up at night and knocking on your door and you can't shake it, it's like something that's chasing you. I tell people, well, just let it catch you and start to work on that thing. And even though sometimes you don't have everything kind of figured out, just you saying that you're going to go and do it, that's an action in itself. Um, and little by little, you just start working on it. And then I just said, I'm going to quit my job. And once I did, honestly, I haven't looked back. And it wasn't even like a public post that I made. I did say, I, you, know, you know, that I was quitting my job. Yeah. And I can't, I honestly, like, I just had every single opportunity after that period like I haven't looked back and it's such a blessing to you know to be here and to see this book materialize into this and to be here like on your podcast first off seriously um I just haven't looked back so be be courageous be, be faithful but don't be foolish so so have a plan but but there is going to become a time where it's going to be really uncomfortable for you and you are going to have to yeah, just step out there and just make a decision yeah man this is this is so good, man. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. And I love this so much because you were faced with that moment of like the thing that you should do mm. and the thing that you were really called to do. Right. You know, and having the audacity. And I love the fact that you had that family support. And this is a, one of the things that everybody listening and also you, you know, as you carry on and as you did the the uh, dedication to the fu future mm -hmm. bay <laughs> in the book to carry that on for the generations that come after us, right. you know, to create that space, you know, for people to really follow their heart, but also teaching them the difference with the foolish, you know, just being mindful <laughs> of that because, um, man, if, if you didn't make that decision, like Google was Google, yeah, right. It's calling <laughs> all of this incredible impact wouldn't be here in yeah. this, in this form and fashion right now. So I'm just really, really amazing, man. Grateful for you and Thankful for you saying yes and making all this happen and uh, very, very excited about your book. So can you let folks know where they can get your book and also where they can connect with you online? Sure. Um, they can get my book anywhere books are sold. So we're everywhere in Barnes and Nobles, um, of course, Amazon uh, in Canada. There are a couple other bookstores. Um, so anywhere the books are sold, you can get the book. Um and then you can follow me at Fitman Cook on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, even Twitter. I'm not as active on Twitter. Yeah, we I'm got not, our place I, yeah, we hang out. Just, I don't know. Yeah, you, you know, don't. somebody <laughs> messaged me like, "Dude, you didn't post whatever on Twitter." I don't really hang yeah. out there, but I get in my I get in my zones with Twitter where I just start like just I 
I think it's a really cool because I just put ideas out there, things right. that I think about, even crazy stuff. But uh, who knows? I might get more into it. But yeah, yeah, I feel you, man. I'm kind of an oldie too, in a sense. You know, I I love like social media because of what it's done for me mm-hmm. and my business and 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 fitment and cooking the community. But there there are some times where I kind of think about the the pre social media days. Yeah. And so I try to give myself a break and and and, and like take a step back just a little bit, maybe. Yeah once a month or so yeah i, I love to, that that's yeah. a necessity man yeah i love that we're gonna we've talked a little bit about it, but we're gonna <laughs> talk about that a lot more yeah you know so wow man again thank you so much for coming on and sharing mm-hmm. your gift and i'm just truly man truly truly excited and uh grateful to get this episode out there and also again everybody make sure to pick up a copy of fit man cook this book is phenomenal I'm I'm literally hungry right now, you know. <laughs> and uh got one more quick question for okay. you, man. Final yeah. question. What is the model that you're here to set for other people with the way you live your life? Um, the model that I'm here to set for other people is to that's such a great question. Um The model that I'm here to set for people is just to live your life freely. Um, you don't have to be a purist or or like an absolutist whenever it comes to food. That food is something that should be enjoyed. But one thing that you need to understand about food too is that you need to make sure that it's nourishing your body. So I want to show people that they can enjoy different cuisines. They can show, they can enjoy the decadence of food, but in a calorie conscious way. And and I want to break this this uh, this idea that that people can be fearful of food and have anxiety about it. That all of a sudden, if you eat something, it's gonna jump onto your back and you never be able to lose the weight again. It's not like that. Um, and 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 I hope that people can follow the model that I did within my own life and cook their way to a healthier and and happier life. That you can just start small. Don't look at it like you're trying to, again, boil the entire ocean. We're not trying to do that. We're just going to start little by little by little by little, and you will win in your diet and you'll win in your life. Awesome. Kevin, my man, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. I had a great time just hanging out with Kevin and and, uh, hearing these insights and just the amount of success and impact that he's having on the world right now. There are a lot of cookbooks out there, obviously. And so for him to jump in the game and to jump in this with, he had his heart in the right place, right? So this is a medium for him. He got in there early of like, no, let me actually give away these great things. Let me just give it away where people are, you know, they have to invest in this and that. Let me just make this open and and accessible and bring people in, get people inspired and brought in on this mission. And like he said, he said community many times. He didn't say, my followers. He's looking at this as a community of people that he's serving and he's doing this the right way. My man's been hanging out with Oprah. He's doing classes in Nigeria, all of these incredible, powerful things because he said yes to his vision, even with the uncertainty. You know, so I also want to just speak that into your spirit today as well. And where are you holding back and, and making excuses and waiting for the right moment? Because the right moment is when you say it is. And also, one thing that just kind of stuck with me, and it came up for like 30 minutes later, about taking a break. Man, we don't talk about this enough. If you just meal prep every Sunday from now to kingdom come, you're going to be like me back when I did the slim fast diet. You're going to want to take somebody out. You're not going to like people. You're not going to like yourself. You're not going to like the process. Unless it's something that you're deeply, deeply passionate about. Like you feel like I can't breathe unless I meal prep. Go for it. All right. Knock yourself out. But just to keep yourself fresh. And I seen this firsthand. I saw this with my wife specifically. She was doing the meal prep for months. And then all of a sudden, nothing for like months. All right. Like it just... She went so hard with it and made it that this was something she had to do when the best thing is like, but here's the thing, let's strategically plan it as well. You know, like three weeks on, one week off. This is an opportunity to try new things, try some different restaurants, outsource your food prep. There's lots of different services now. Uh, Maybe you do more ready-made meals, have somebody chop stuff up for you. There's so many ways you can go about it where you don't have the whole weight of the food prep going on your shoulders, even though... At the end of the day, that's what's going to be ideal for us because one of the biggest aha moments, because he spoke this out, is something that I know in my heart, 
But when you're cooking your food, you are in control of what you're eating. Just that in of itself, we can miss that because you might have some great, you know, sauteed kale or Brussels sprouts with bacon from, you know, whatever restaurant that you fancy. But, you know, maybe they're cooking it in canola oil or, you know, some highly processed, uh, what is it? Can't believe it's not butter, right? Whatever it is, parquet. And you know, okay, this is some partially hydrogenated whatever, like this is causing massive free radical activity in my body, whatever it is. You can then take, make the same thing, but with the ingredients that you really want. And actually nine times out of 10, it's gonna come out better. All right, especially if you got something like Fit Man Cook in your hand. All right, so definitely check it out. And listen, I've got some incredible episodes coming up. So be ready, take care, have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon.